it's time to go beyond plus ultra for another Boku no Hero Academia review. Uh, yep, yeah, and I am here too. I, I am a thing. I have, I have come here willingly. Didn't have to chain me to a chair this time. <laughs> Ah, oh boy, this, I'm sorry? Not for these, at least. Yes, not for these, because, who, this was, I don't want to say lopsided, but it feels like the like, focal point of this episode was in the first half, and then once that was done, this episode was... It felt real rushed. Like, yeah. not rushed, but, like, short. It felt shorter than I would have expected based on, like, the teaser for the last one mm -hmm. from the last episode. And then, like, what we were expecting in this, it felt real short. Also, it leads to a lot of other questions uh, based on what All for One says. Yeah. Um. So, the interesting bit is, like, we get inside of the whole, like, God, what what was the, what was the term he used for this? Like, this uh, world? No, he used something else, like the transference, some or something like that, right? It, I think. Let's start at the start of the episode rather than digging into this. We'll we'll really get into it once we get there. That'll probably be the easiest. Way. Yeah. So we have a flashback to what happened last time with Bakugo saving Deku. At, uh, jumping in at the last second, being stabbed by the red tendrils. Yep. And yep, the, the weird red tendrils, which I, at first, when we got that repeat here of that, I, my brain was like, wait, is this how the power siphon works? And then I'm like, did we ever actually see him do that? Mm. And then my brain jumped back to like, wait, no, there was a flashback where we saw it happen and he transferred two people's quirks. Mm between the two of them so we did see him do it so it seems like it would only need to be a touch which is confirmed here he just needs to touch you yes yes and shoto saves bakugo because bakugo like passes out and starts falling oh yeah i mean he's been stabbed in the stomach i'm kind of surprised with just one foot he's able to catch and hold both of them without just dropping to the ground because mm -hmm. it's only his foot that's propelling both him with Adult Endeavor and Bakugo. It's a bit impressive. Yeah. And All for One just said, like, so much blood was unnecessarily shed. Oh, yeah. He's literally taunting Deku to get to him. Which, you know, we get that quick flashback to the guy that uh, the original owner of Black with, who's like, yeah, it's going to respond to your anger. Maybe don't lose your shit. And Deku just... Oh yeah, he snaps. And he gains, like, shadow face? See, that's the weird thing. I don't know what that's supposed to be. I'm not 100% sure. Because... It, it's so... Hmm. Because right when um, the tendrils were about to come out, there's this, like, little lightning flash across Deku's face. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's meant to be, like, him just snapping at that point. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the visual representation of him snapping and just going full berserker mode at that point. I don't think that's anything that has to do with the quirk so much as it is just trying to show the emotion in his brain happening. Could it be a different quirk? I highly doubt it. Otherwise, it would have actually done something, I feel like. Like, it would have done more than just show a little lightning bolt. Fair, but, yeah, fair enough. Uh, get a nice face palm right there from Shiggy, and all of a sudden, we're in fucking weird world. The we're in mad world. world? Yeah, that is definitely not what it is. That is not what he calls it. Like, the transference world? I think that's what he calls it, the transference so, we were wrong last time saying the worlds of One for All and All for One will merge in some kind of fight. Yeah, it, it's not that. This seems to be, like, part of, um, 
part of Alpha One's quirk. I'm guessing it's like the mental landscape where he siphons like the quirk out or what have you. Mm-hmm. It's not them merging into one. This is something that I assume he like we get with every single person that he's taken a quirk from. Yeah. To some degree. Now, obviously, I really doubt any of them were able to put up this kind of resistance, but <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Nana's here. Mm-hmm. And she even says something like, the rest of us will figure something out. Like, you can't do anything here uh, right now. You can't move in this world. We'll take care of things. Okay, so my translation said, we'll f- the rest of us will figure something uh, out. I, I, I just, like, jotted that down. That's probably not the exact thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is interesting because only two of them show up. I'm curious if like the other eight would have popped in, what would have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um that's you can't move in this world, that's why the rest of us will take care of it. Yeah, so it's it's a slightly different translation there. Um yeah. given the way that things panned out, I kinda think yours is more accurate. Because it didn't seem like they were on the ropes or anything. It honestly seemed like a fairly simple thing for them to do this. Yeah. Like, there wasn't much struggle. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. And remember, I have the official crunch Quote unquote, but yes. Yeah, and everything that's not right, I'm like half paraphrasing in my notes. Yeah, yeah. We jump back to, uh, uh, the like traffic the report. Saying yeah, a traffic that report. Saying that Giganumachia is moving at 100 kilometers an hour and will be at what used to be Jakku City in about less than 10 minutes. Nah, man, it's cool. It'll be fine. Yeah, and Machia smells two masters. Which is kind of interesting, because that makes me wonder what he's actually smelling. Yeah. Like, it can't just be a normal scent. He's smelling something else. Is he smelling the soul? I don't know. Or, like, does the quirk give off some odor? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's, like, a quirk sense more than it is, like, a, uh, a an odor smell, like, sense, maybe? And then we have some unnamed orange and red heroes telling them, like, hey, evacuate as many people as you can, save the city before... Machia comes through. They evacuate everyone quick before everyone gets through. And don't let them, like, don't let the civilians suffer for our mistakes. Hey, hey, um, and you heroes over there, you can fly. Go tell Endeavor what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, comms are still down. Go tell Endeavor what's going on. And, and Ingenium uh... just bolts off with them, and the hero says, like, hey, um, you can't fly. What are you doing? Oh, wait. You're way too fast. I mean, if anyone would probably get there faster than the flyers, it'd be Ingenium. Yes. He'd be the fastest one, probably. Do you think he's faster than Machia now? Like, 100 kilometers an hour? It wouldn't shock me if he went full gear that he would be. Now, could he make a turn in time? Who the fuck knows? Probably not. But in a straight line race, I think Ingenium at full speed would be Machia. Um, but yeah, they're they're running off to help. We get a little monologue with Ochko being like, shit's getting bad, and it's been bad ever since that first day that Shigaraki showed up. Does it seem like the shadows are getting longer at night? Why does that sound like a Gregory Horror Picture Show line? Ooh, I don't know. When I heard that line, it immediately flashed that series in my head. And I don't know why. Did you ever watch season two afterwards no i don't think i did I, I wasn't interested enough to watch it okay but it, it was an interesting thing being like the whole like blocky style of it oh yeah it, it was definitely interesting and given the fact that like cg was kind of garbage at the time it's got enough of a style that it's gonna hold itself together I mean, it still looks like an early CG thing, but yeah. it's not the worst. And it managed to tell, like, a little story in its, like, three-minute episodes, which was interesting. hmm But yeah, that line just immediately flashed that series in my head for whatever reason, and I don't know why. Maybe there was a line like that in season one. 
Maybe something similar, yeah. And somehow we have Shigaraki and all for one is attached to him somehow. Yeah, it's like growing out of him. It's fine. I can't tell if it's growing out of his arm or if it's like just the shoulder or if it's the whole arm. Hey, look over there. There's oh, the Tomura, look at your. It's that crappy grandmother who abandoned you all. Ugh. That's what it is. He calls it the transfer. That that's what this entire like thing is right now. Because like the wind is blowing towards Shigaraki and All for One. Mm-hmm. So here here's the interesting bit, right? And this uh-huh. is what I have questions about. All for One goes on a little monologue here about how like organ transplants and all this other shit leads to people like having weird, you know, dreams and stuff, right? Or acting differently afterwards. And according to him, in this world, it's because memories are embedded even in, like, organs and such, right? Mm -hmm. So, the same is with Quirks, because he goes along the lines of, like, oh, man, you know, I I go to bed, and people whose Quirks I've taken, like, they berate me in my dreams, and I feel guilty about it. But, you know, when I get rid of them, I don't feel bad anymore. No, so when he gets rid of the Quirk, he loses that person so does yeah all they're not there anymore quir- so does all quirks have some sort of vestige world and since quirks are not transferable that's why people don't realize it because they're only with themselves in, in well a sense. he mentions other examples being like organ transplants and stuff right yeah, so it, yeah. it's a similar theory. So my next question then leads to like, it, it actually ties into this fucking episode and halfway decently. What the fuck goes on with Toga who has to drink people's blood to trigger her quirk? Hmm. Does she, does blood also transfer at that point? Like memories into her? Maybe. Like how, how does that work for her? Or like say Sun Eater, how does that work for him? I mean, he's technically ingesting it. It's not becoming... It is It is becoming part of his body, right? Like, his body is forming itself into what the original thing was. Is that using the same concept at that point? The memories of the flesh that he's eaten become the shape of his limbs? Maybe? And there's a bunch of different things that I'd be curious about. If this is the way that things are thought to work, how that applies to other quirks other than all for one. Yeah, so are... Are we just to assume that because, like, because All for One is having a new quirk or a stolen quirk, he's having just a little bit of their personality embedded into him until he gets rid of it? Or are we to assume that in some sense of things, there's a vestige world for each and every quirk? Well, the second question would be uh, the duplicate quirks that the doctor made. Do those have memories recorded into them as well? In which case, right, what about all the other quirks that Shigaraki's had embedded into his body? Where are those vestiges? And for the duplicated quirks, do they have memory of the original? Well, that's what I was asking. And again, like if, if Shiggy has a bunch of other quirks, assuming they're not copies and those copies don't already have their own memories from being copied. If those are all original quirks he has, where are those vestiges? I mean, granted, he hasn't gone to sleep the way um, All for One talks about. He's been, like, essentially dead in that fucking glass tube until he was reawoken. So he hasn't had maybe a chance to feel that, but I'd be curious where those are. I know All for One had, like, over a hundred years of this, but did he suppress all the vestiges of stolen quirks? He only seems to say that they come to him in his dreams, right? Mm. Like when he goes to sleep. So outside of that, who knows? It probably is the is the only place that they can really get to him. Though, again, that also leads to the question of what the fuck is with All for One right now literally being fucking merged with Shiggy's shoulder. Yeah. Like, how 
how is his vestige this strong and no one else's is? That's what I'm more curious about. Is it just because he's lived so long and he has that many more memories as like a strength to himself versus someone else? Um, I just got to the point now and it seems that his waist is coming out of Shigaraki's entire right side. So he doesn't have his right arm then? Or part of his right chest. I, I will say, seeing Nana here, I don't know why. It feels like they drew her in a more muscular tone, too. I don't think she was this muscular in a lot of the flashbacks hmm. we've had of her. Now, granted, maybe this is what she's meant to look like when she's actually using one for all. Yeah. Versus when she's just, you know, relaxing normally like a normal person. <laughs> kind of like All Might in muscle form and not muscle form. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing it now, too. It, it's literally like he's coming out from, like, just below the waistline and taking up the entire side of his shoulder over part of his body. And it seems that Shigaraki, or maybe this is part of the quick stealing, that he uses some kind of decay and erodes the world? He... he like the area or the ground that they're standing on as the transference is trying to pull everything toward him. And Nana is blocking it with some kind of air attack? I have no idea what it is. Like, the only quirk that should technically work in here is uh, all for one. Now, how this is working now, I have to assume is just like... A way to utilize the built-up power that One for All has, maybe? To push back against it? But it's not good enough, and it's slowly getting closer, and then, um, uh, Brother shows up. Mm-hmm. The original One for All. Mm-hmm. Um... We and don't he and are just like, nah, bro, we're not going over there. We, we don't, don't want any... that. Did we ever get a name for him? Nope. Mm. I mean, All for One doesn't technically have a name. His name is his quirk. Yeah. His quirk is his name. We don't get an answer. Well, we do get All for One's name as the original Shigaraki, so... Mm-hmm. Did we get his first name at any point? Well, hold on, back up. We got what? All for one's name as since his real name was Shigaraki and he adopted Tomura, making him Tomura Shigaraki, but... Did they actually, or is that just the name he came up with? Like, is that actually his last name? Do we know? I thought it was, but I can't guarantee that. I don't remember that being mentioned as his last name. Mm. Also, as an evil underworld fucking leader, I don't think he would use his real name. So even if that was a name he had, I don't think it's his original name. I think he would have come up with some other, you know, alias to go by. But jumping to the real world for just a second, did famous gangsters like Al Capone, was that his real name? I think it was? But, I mean, Al Capone was also well-known at that point, right? I don't think that was anything that was hidden so much. Mm. But if you're, like, an underground overlord, like, all for one here would be, who's constantly moving around and lived for how many fucking years at this point, you would be using an alias. You'd have to. Otherwise, people could track you. Fair enough. Especially when you're being hunted by, like, the holders of One for All. Okay, okay. So, um, Brother stops the energy wave. Yep, me and Nana work together, shove it back off, and oh man, that's that half of the episode. Uh, actually, they say, um, we have chosen to be inside this boy. Yeah, you know what? It's a great line, isn't it? Feels good. Take that as out of context as you want. And then it seems that All For One has taken more control because he... Mm, his hand's in the way, but it looks like he shoved 
Shigaraki off to the side and is like standing almost completely straight up now? I'm trying to get to that point. Uh, 1120. Okay, he's, yeah, he's absorbing more of the, of Shigaraki's body, yeah, it seems like, because now he's coming out of, like, almost the entirety of the chest and neck. So, yeah, he does seem to be forcibly taking over Tomura again. Yeah, and, um, I should control Shigaraki because he needs to be protected. His quirk won't be able to protect him. Mm Mm-hmm. And then all the previous users of One For All merge with Deku, and he lunges. That's what I don't understand. Like, what that bit's about. Why did he lunge at him like that? Because I feel like you'd want to force yourself away from that direction, not toward it. I don't know. That's the part I'm not quite clear on. Either way... Uh, they kind of get literally forced uh, out of the transference. Deku goes unconscious, and it seems like Shigaraki is barely awake. And you have a little monologue from uh, All for One saying, you haven't bonded with the quirk yet, that's why we couldn't steal it. Gotta stay conscious, gotta fall back, gotta rest and complete your body. So do you think we will see... I mean, we won't be seeing Shigaraki until the final arc, and then he'll be like, hey, look at me, I'm complete now, ha ha ha. I don't think so. Oh. I think we will see him, but it won't be like, it'll be more in snippets, right? Like, it won't be like a full-on secondary fight, maybe. I'm leaning more toward it gonna be like, we'll see him preparing shit. Ah. We won't get another Villain Academia arc, but we might get some, like, snippets of something akin to that. Mm, okay, okay. But, yeah. So, yeah, there goes our first half of the episode. The half that was apparently, like, supposed to be the entire episode based on the teaser we got. Yeah! And it's kind of surprising that now we're focusing on... Half of the villains, kind of. A little bit, yeah. So yeah, we get the whole thing about ten minutes until what's his face uh shows up. We get some monologue back and forth here about them checking out satellite images with um uh what's Endeavor. his name? No 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 no. Oh oh oh, oh satellite uh, Skeptic. Skeptic, that's okay, the dude's name. I thought you meant satellite images of Endeavor. Sorry. Nope. Nope, Skeptic is getting images of like the situation that's going on over in Jaku. Dobby seems super excited that the fact that Endeavor's there. Yeah. We have a nice little chat with Toga and Compress. Toga is very conflicted at this point, it seems like, because the people she seems to like in the most stalker kind of way possible, I would guess. This stalker Yandere style kind of way. Yeah. She's like, I like them, but I'd also probably don't want to kill them. But if they answer me the wrong way about why Jin would have to die, why didn't they try to save him? You know, they're heroes, yada yada. Yeah, um, he- heroes are meant to save people. So, does that mean Jin wasn't a person? I mean, it. the problem is, what happens when the person that you're trying to save, quote-unquote, decides that it's better to murder everyone instead? Yeah. Right? Like... She's looking at this as, like, a one-on-one situation and not a, like, literal population-level problem here. Mm -hmm. What Twice would have done had he lived would have caused, like, uh, how many hundreds of others, potentially thousands, to die because the villains would have completely overrun the heroes. Because the heroes would have died, not to mention whatever other civilians would have gotten caught in the mess. Not to mention the ones that currently are getting caught in the mess, thanks to fucking Gigantomachia here. Since Twice died and was ble- was bleeding out, do you think she stole some of his blood for, like... I don't think she ever got to his body. I mean, there's the potential she might have, but I don't think she ever got there. To... She only had the cl- mud clone. Oh, to... 
I'm not too sure because it's Dobby might have gotten a vial of blood for her. He oh. could have done that. Okay, because it would be good because like she's young dairy, so she's more violent. And I'm not too sure if she would be up against psychological torment, but that might be good, like, for Hawks, or I... What? Where what? are you going with this? Like, I, I, I don't... I don't know. Where does Hawks come into play with this because, at like, all? Maybe Dobby told her that, hey, Hawks killed twice. And now she's, and now she'd be like, I hate Hawks, and... She's never mentioned Hawks by name, and when Dobby and her met, he's never said a word. Maybe he did, I, but I don't understand why he would. I'm grasping the straws here! But yes, and you're pulling things from out of nowhere that I don't know how they would make any sense story-wise. Because she did, kind of love twice in some way like a brother almost yeah yeah so and she said that she can only turn into peoples who she loves i don't remember that being a limitation of her quirk because uh, then why would she be able to transform into the old granny so i thought they said something about i thought she just said something about i can only turn into people i love i don't remember that being said at all not in this episode and not in prior episodes it might be that that's what she likes to do, but I don't think that's a limitation of her quirk. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I think I think that might just be an extension of the Andariaism and not the quirk. Okay. Like, that's kind of where I fall on this, if that's even a thing that she said before. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. So we have Ojiko and Priyapi saving people. Doing a good job saving people, doing a, doing a thing. Yeah. As the other heroes are running to try and stop Machia, or at least slow him down. And then, like you have spoiled, a granny comes along. Hey, hey, help me! My husband! Oh. Uh, one, one quick thing that we skipped over here. Um, Spinner does come out, and shockingly, he actually says some things. Oh, yeah. He's generally just kind of there and doesn't do anything, but... He actually, much like Jin, seems to actually have an emotional uh, connection here. Mm -hmm. Where he's like, look, you know, I, you're not the only one that cared for twice, you know, and him dying. Just come back to us, you know. That, that's basically what he says. And it's enough to be like, oh, man, Spinner, you have some kind of emotion, I guess. You're here. Yeah. <laughs> you're a person, I guess. You're not just a cardboard cutout. And you're some kind of lizard i guess oh my god your scares are real and not cardboard what <laughs> i thought you were one of those life-size cutouts this entire time it's kind of the one that's left behind out of this villain group the whole time it feels like like compress gets more dobby obviously gets a lot twice and toga got a lot so what Spinner's just kind of there he gets the rough end of the stick what do they have against spinner not having enough to do i don't know maybe it's because they just gave him the quirk he's a gecko lizard man yeah it's like <laughs> they don't know what to do with him well um he's a gecko he can swing some swords i guess but i don't know what being a lizard man's gonna do for that yeah <laughs> but yeah dojigo makes a save on froppy who's also got a couple of civilians and old granny comes roaming up being like oh my god my Husband, he's in the house come with me she runs down a dark alley and i'm like oh yeah this is just straight toga like i'm not even gonna front i immediately knew when she showed up that's toga yeah, yeah. not even not even gonna try and hide it at all no and right down the alleyway boy you fast old woman oh it's because i love my husband so much my takio i love him so much i have to run fast now, this is the part where I would say, hey, wait a minute, how does he know that name? Or was it just one she made up? Yeah. Is it perhaps because the blood has memories? Ooh. Ooh. In which case, also, where are these old people? Or was this blood she also had just laying around on her person? Maybe. Like, it could be either. I don't know. 
But yeah, we turned down another quarter alley and oh god, it's Toga, shocker. Also, yeah, she runs into a house and she must have just had her change of clothing just waiting in there to change into uh-huh. as she hides. Oh wait, it's Toga. What a twist. What a twist. <laughs> and Oge goes all like, I'm just gonna sneak my way in here and like figure out where she's at. And I'm just like, why don't you just leave? Vic, I understand this is an opportunity, but at the same time, you're on your own and in a shit situation. So she gets tackled by Toga, who says, Ochiko, what do you want to do to me? No, no, no. Falls from the ceiling. Ah, uh, okay. After, you know, having like a haunted house level of, oh man, I loved uh, you guys. You know, I wish I could have talked to Sue too. You know, you're all, I like you all. And you got the voice coming from all over in this dingily lit house. And then she comes in from the ceiling with a knife. Yeah. Hey, what do you want to do to me? Am I going to get murdered like Jin? Are you going to kill me? I think Ojiko makes the right response here of like, the fuck did you do to the people to get their blood just to ask this question? Wait, You wait. could have just asked normally. Wait, just? What do you mean, just? Really, because my, my thing is her just, like, losing it over the fact that she calls them stupid questions. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Ochiko throws her off and is all, like, striking hero pose as I get up. I'm gonna apprehend you! And that's it. That's all we got. Do you think there is a chance Toga is redeemable? Oh, I think she's totally redeemable. It's just a matter of does she get pushed too far before that's no longer an option? Right? Had it been Deku instead, I think Deku would have definitely found the right words to bring her back around. It, with it, Ochiko, it, it's a little moment. more... Yeah, with Ochiko, it's a little more questionable. Because I know what she wants to do, but I don't know if what she wants... Like, what she's saying here is going to be enough to, like, flip Toga. Especially given the situation they're in right now. Yeah. Toga has gone out of her way to make a situation where you could just ask a simple question way worse than it needed to be. Yeah. Also, if Sue had come along, I don't think it would have helped the situation. At least in Toga's way of trying to, like, fight both of them at once. I think Toga would have had no chance if they were both on her at once. Oh, yeah, totally. She, she's much better at, like, assassination level shit of one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. She cannot take a group unless she's using her quirk to, like, duplicate other quirks, essentially. Right? Mm -hmm. Or, like, uh, sneak your way into something. Even then, the two-on-one aspect, I think, still puts her at a severe disadvantage, given what her quirk can do. She has to copy someone else's quirk you know drink their blood and copy it that way it's the only way that she has any kind of chance and it has to be a probably a fairly powerful one to deal with two at once oh yeah like if it was just ochiko or just froppy that she like drank the blood of neither of those quirks on their own is gonna stop both of them from like taking her down Ooh boy but next time it seems like shigaraki's awake again is it wakey wakey time? Yeah. Is it more eggs and bakey? Oh, and Shigaraki's probably like, uh, no, nah, boss, I want to fight some more. Well, now, I think the question is still who's in charge of the body currently? Because they have the tendrils springing from his back in, like, mm -hmm. wings. Well, and one eye's, one eye's got, like, Shigaraki's red in it, and the other one's, like, whited out. Mm hmm. So I'm not sure who's in charge at the moment. And he seems to be like hovering upwards? A little bit? Although, I don't know. Could he fly before essentially or no? Or is that is that just his like leaping and shit? I'm not sure. Also, Dobby's apparently uh, going to make some confessions. And I think we're going to finally get a confirmation that he is in fact Todoroki's long lost brother. Yeah. Because we get a shot of his mom. Mm-hmm. And 
Machia enters the fight. Yeah, Machia is here. Oh boy, this is gonna be chaotic. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, okay, okay. How much of this episode will be about Dobby? Four minutes? Three minutes? It's the last four minutes of the episode. <laughs> it's, like, hey. this, is, this episode was at least the second time that it's been like, huh, I feel like what you teased us earlier was going to be the full episode. And it was like half or less. <laughs> Two minutes left. Hey, Endeavor. Or should I say, Father? Wait, well, what? Son. Wait, what? To be continued. Yeah, right. <laughs> Roundabout starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the Dobby part is at least half the the chap the chapter the the episode, nice. and like the rest and it, like the next part of the fight with Shigaraki is the other half. I think our second question should be, is Ingenium and the others going to get there in this next episode or not? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yes, yes he will, because there is a shot of him sliding directly in front of Shoto. Yes, but is that the last episode? <laughs> the last minute? After Davi says, yeah, hi Oto-san, what's going on? Oh, you're right. <laughs> it's the last second of the episode. Hmm. Yeah, no. No, you know what? They're going to take it one step further. Okay. It's the teaser to next episode's teaser. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> They're taking it right to the final step of the process. They're skipping the middleman. <laughs> so we will continue to review next time. Ah, yes. And uh, we forgot to mention our sponsors. Cake Cola. Cola. Every day is your birthday with a can of Cake Cola. Every day is your birthday with a can of Cake Cola. <laughs> yes, and now don't... releasing an ice cream cake flavor. Ooh, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe. We would really appreciate it. Do all the dingly doos down below the video, please. Yes. And we'll catch everybody next week. Goodbye.